this thing was really going to This whole consciousness came back. This, the last couple of years. What was really supposed to go on when it came to us is an intelligence, which means sorry I'm a idea. Some person finds some stuff, they report this stuff in, and it becomes an intelligence. You see what I'm saying? But you also need got that same follow and herd mentality. You see what I'm saying? And everybody is double up in this sectary corner where everybody is actually, I'm trying I'm not traveling, everybody is answering their own science. Why this stuff from all over the country? Which is which is what this thing was really supposed to be. This whole consciousness came back this, the last couple of years. What was really supposed to go on when it came to an intelligence? Which means it was supposed to be a consortium of ideas. Some person finds some stuff, they report this stuff in, and it becomes an intelligence. You see what I'm saying? But too often we got that same follow and herd mentality. You see what I'm saying? And everybody is double up in this sectary corner where everybody is actually, I'm fine, I'm not traveling. Everybody is answering their own science. But everybody is answering their own science. But everybody is answering their own science. All right, all right, all right. Hey, family, was good? Saturday service. Saturday service with the family. You know what it is. Say, so, hey, look, sometimes, sometimes the church service has to open on a Saturday. Why? Because we need that extra funds. So y'all need to be bringing it, bringing it. Man, listen, we got Philip Cooper with us, the magician the author of The Magician. All of y'all that are claiming to be magicians, we got the, the magician himself here today with the family. Say what's up to the family, Phil. What's up? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> now, Phil, you know, you Phil, you can keep it how you do it. You know what I mean? Just, it's yeah, just yeah. that's my lingo. This is your lingo. You know, we're gonna keep it real, uh, you know, real player style. Man, so yeah, um, we're gonna ask Phil a few questions, man. I just wanna thank Phil for coming on. And also I wanna thank Phil for making me his business partner. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Y'all gonna wanna stay tuned for that. But also more and more importantly. I want to thank Phil for all the writings, the, the, the beautiful writing, because the work is, uh, how you say simplistic, but under, but, um, but still advance. So it's like, wow, he, he was able to make it understandable to the common folk. Like anybody read anybody read the magician and it I put <clears throat> anybody can read the magician and feel you know comfortable with the word <clears throat> and comfortable understanding the concepts because that's what it is a concept of your subconscious mind and all of that. So I want to thank you again for Phil for just putting in these magical works. My favorite book that you wrote. Uh, believe it or not, is not the magician. It's actually the secrets of creative visualization. That book is uh, really a powerful read and something that everybody has to ha get their hands on because it just brought a lot of light and clarity in a real simple way. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, let's see who's in the building, man. Y'all like and share the video, man. Like and share the video. We still got Trav tomorrow. Don't worry. Do not worry. What's up? What's up, great goodness? Aaron, what's the deal? I said CNC. Uh, who else is in here? Lady Owl, Nate, Brian, what's up? Perfect Balance, The Monkey. What's up, Fee? C Diggs. Monique, what's the deal? Man, look, y'all share the video so everybody can get up in here 
and let them know we got the magician himself. Now, Phil, can you just tell us a little bit about uh, your upbringing and how you came into magic? <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, uh, I had a normal sort of upbringing for the 50s. Me, me uh, father was uh, in the Navy in the war. My mum was in the army. Um, uh, pretty normal, really, nothing special, not really a, any special upbringing. Um, uh, it, it was, a, I always remember it being hard. Uh, um, and um, you, yeah, you had more um, <clears throat> independence when you was younger. I mean, like today, you know, they they look after the children more. Uh, I don't know, um, sort of wrap them in cotton wool a bit more. I don't know what it's like in America, but here it's it's. Yeah. But anyway, it's the same way. Anyway, I was same. a bit of a <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was a bit. I was a bit of a rogue when I was little. Got into a lot of mischief and that. Um, but I had a few strange. Um, I had a few strange things happen um, when I was young. I uh, <clears throat> I used to um, uh, let's think of something. Um, uh, there was one time that comes to mind when uh, there was something. When I used to, well, when I was about <clears throat> when I was about five, I used to wake up early in the morning, creep into my parents' room, and get in my, my dad's side. Mm -hmm. And this particular day, it was sunny. Um, I remember it being sunny and it was about four in the morning, but it was light because it was summertime. And I was trying to like get in, nudge my way in. And uh, I um, I couldn't really get in. So I thought, well, oh, I'll go back in my own bed. You know? So I was laying, laying in my bed just, just staring around and that. And, and now I had the wardrobe mirror from where I lay, you could see the corner of the window where the curtain was. Mm. Um, and I, I happened to notice something staring through the window. And this is like two stories up, uh, something weird. So I sort of rushed out of my bed, took a second look as I went out the door and uh, dived back in my parents' room um in the bed uh, i don't know what it was it was semi strange uh to this day i don't know what it was um, um and then there was um i used to see certain things like that quite a lot and um i don't really when i got older it sort of slowed down i don't really know if it's if it's relevant oh that's the dogs um, but also, um, when we used to have, uh, assembly at school, I used to be, uh, I, because I've got, um, my moon is rising in, in my birth chart. It's, I'm quite affected by the moon. I, um, mm. I used to go into, uh, sort of really strong, vivid sort of trances and um one particular time i was having there was two two of us while we was waiting for all the classes to line up and we had a competition for um holding your breath and i made the mistake of holding my breath it was my turn that was going to count me down see how long i could do it i made the mistake of going into a trance and holding my breath so i ended up doing a sort of death posture for Austin Osmond's bear. Mm -hmm. um, nearly nearly fainting. Uh, I don't know if that's relevant. It's just just little silly things that happen to me. <clears throat> um, but I used to be quite religious when I was younger. Mm. And because I never started getting any sort of feedback, if you like, from prayers and stuff, mm -hmm. I started thinking... You know, there must be more to it. 
Um, so I, um, I started looking at alternative religions and, and stuff like that. And really how I got into it. I've just started buying up the books, reading near enough every book I could on the occult and that, and nothing was working. I wasn't getting any results. The only results I was getting was from self-hypnosis and um, um, affirmations. What I used to like doing is making a recording up of an affirmation and playing it mm -hmm. um, when I went to sleep. And then I started using symbolism with it. Uh, like um, imagining you were somewhere like in a, the temple and that and then it all started gradually working out with symbolism and hypnosis but then it uh, that's where it sort of started from really mm -hmm. uh, yes. I, and then it went on to well basically I couldn't get any of the books to work so I thought well something's not right so I really need to find out I was uh, it got to the point where I was sort of saying to myself, I want something to work, you know, anything, as long as something works tangible that I can just see something working. But mm -hmm. then I realised it was so complicated and um, it's a bit like a, 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 a bank, bank vault lot. You have to get all the bits in the right place to get it working and stuff like that. But I don't know if it makes any sense. Um, what I'm saying. I, get, I get a feel. And um, as you're experimenting and everything and, you know, kind of going through this journey of self-discovery or just understanding how manifestation works or just magic works in, 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 in all, tell me if anybody, if you had any teachers or if there was one particular book that like sparked a aha moment in your mind? Um, yeah, I used to, I used to correspond with Ophiel. Mm. I don't, you've ever heard of Ophiel, Edward C. Mm -hmm. Peach. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to correspond with him and I used to do a lot of astral projection work years ago. So that's probably sort of where I got a lot of inspiration from, um, from the, uh, Art and practices of astral projection. So I started doing a lot of astral projection um, and uh, um, yeah, there's some interesting things happening there. Uh, particularly the dream, the dream method was quite good. Mm -hmm. um, I used to get false awakenings at night and, um, and um, out of body experiences. Uh, sometimes I still get them, um, even though I don't actually practice that so much now, you know. Um, but that that was the, the first books were that I could really work with was um, Ophiel's series, you know, the art and practice of. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. That's good. That's good. Okay, so now let's get to the, the main Jewel, the main discussion. Your book, The Magician, which is a you know very powerful book in America. <coughs> I know you was telling me like, shoot, I didn't realize I had such a wide response. But yeah, and and uh and it's and it's uh mainly according to a few teachers of ours that kind of dropped the book on us, like Bobby Hammett and Brother Panic. Have you ever heard of them? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've oh, seen God. okay. You shot yeah. me, Jill. Damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen. I've seen. Him. I've listened to him on uh, YouTube and that. Oh, um, nice, nice, nice. You know. <laughs> Which is 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 good in a way because it's sort of like free advertising for the book. <laughs> right, right, right. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, what do you What do you think about him? Yeah, I like how he comes over and that and sort of reminds me of Eddie Murphy, you know, a bit. <laughs> you know, this is like, 
it's got the humour with it, which I think you should have. You know, it's not. I think I think man, the occult should be humorous. Um, should enjoy doing it. Not, you know, a lot of people they're a bit hesitant, they're a bit fearful because they they're not sure what it's about. Um, mm. I think the only the only problem with the occult is that it chances are you might change your personality a little bit, and people get worried about that because then they start seeing the world in a different way and. They, they think they're going a bit mad, you know, but it really all it is is their their awareness is developing more. Uh, but yeah, yeah, because when when you start to realize this is just our natural way of being, you know what I mean, and uh, the program is just kind of dying off after a while, then you just start to say, oh, yeah. okay, this is just who I was supposed to be all along. I just been mind yeah. controlled into a whole nother you know a whole nother story yeah i say i think people i think people who do do a lot of occult work do sort of i, I mean I've, I've known people to stop doing it because they've said it's changing my outlook and i feel like i'm a different person you know mm-hmm. and they've stopped doing it for that reason um um yeah, I mean, one of the most important things in the book, which is quite subtle, really, is the fact that we use belief as a tool. Mm-hmm. And um, by, but you know, really believing in something does actuate the subconscious mind and bring about things in, um, well, coincidental ways. Um so, so strong belief is actually a good tool to use. I, I definitely think it's a good tool to use in uh, in in the occult. Uh, a subtle tool, but especially in this day and age, it's hard to stay positive. So, obviously, your subconscious picks up on negative and positive uh, responses, and can then, you know inject that into your life and then you think you're having bad luck and so on so definitely uh that's the first step i suppose is belief you know using belief as a tool right right um nice 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 okay so phil um now you wrote you've written how many books have you written uh, so far i've done six I did six six books with Samuel Weiser, mm-hmm. and I've actually uh, probably done another six. Um, the first one I done was I don't know if you can see that one. That's the very first one I did. <laughs> That's me, <laughs> like thirty years ago or more. Um, so that was the first one I did, and then. I retitled that to, um, I had I had one called, the second one was Principium Magicus, the Cosmonomica, but Samuel Weiser didn't like the title, it was too big. So they used used the words Principium Magicus and the Cosmonomica inside the book, but they called it Basic Magic. So it, it uh, was a better title, I suppose, for them to market. Um, but I've republished that now as Principia Magicus, the Cosmonomicon, and uh, that second book is now available. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the Candle Magic book still still being published by Samuel Weiser, and I think they've just stopped doing the uh, the esoteric one, Tree of Life one. I think you can still get that as a Kindle though. Um, the Secrets of Creative Visualization, that one. Is out of print now, and I wasn't going to distribute it again. But uh, um, I suppose I could do it if there's enough people want to get a copy. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And right. then, of course, there's the tarot. The tarot book I had that published with Spiral Publishing, but they um, they they went out of. Uh, there was a new publishing company, and they went out of business after a short time, so it didn't really get out much 
So I decided to republish that one, um, the tarot one, just to uh, try and put it put it across how easy it is to do if you know without all this nonsense about cards spinning round and upside down and that sort of thing. Try to keep it simple, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, talking about the magician book, um, yeah, the first part is basically about the subconscious trying to explain to people about how powerful the subconscious is and and that it can be used other than just um, in hypnosis. It can be used in lots of other ways as well, especially in ritual. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, then to talk about the temple, you know, mm-hmm. and building a temple. A lot of people can't have a permanent temple, so you can have a temporary setup which is, is is okay I, I think a full setup is better though if you can do it i used to have one um where i lived before um yeah we're so and, physical in nature you have to kind of have one you know what i mean just to kind of go to a yeah just create sometimes yeah 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 a sacred space or somewhere um but you know you should you know what i try and put over is that you should be able to work magic anywhere at any time really right um sometimes works for me (laughs) sometimes it don't um but and then we talk about the inner temple which is quite an important concept really because you can use the inner temple without using the pentagram ritual or the cosmic sphere or or anything that's an opening and closing ritual really a magic circle um so you can actually just use the inner temple. You can just imagine the door with the encircled cross on, light your candle, see the door open and perceive yourself going into the temple. And then the more practice you use, the, the stronger your Im- imagination gets because you don't have to use visualisation. I used to struggle with visualisation. Um, and that's one of the things I couldn't get to work with the books. You know, I thought, even though my uh, visualization is a lot better now, it, when I first started, it wasn't very good. So, mm-hmm. so imagination is the key. It, yeah. It's easy. It's natural. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And now you have a book. You have um, some new books coming out to give step by step on how to actually work the uh, magical pentagram or, you know, circle in your mind or kind of work the yeah. whole magician book. Oh, the uh, the user guide, you mean? Yeah, the user guide, yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm uh, just finishing, putting the finishing touches to that. Um, basically, read that book with the magician book and it should answer more questions and... Um, just help a little bit with the magician book because um, I don't know how easy people find the magician book to understand. Oh, um, it was it's very easy. But I, I can see, um, you know, if somebody's actually doing the work and, you know, trying to do all the exercises, that can be kind of a strain in today's life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Going on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you don't need to use the planets, the personal right. planets. Um, you can just use the general planets, um, or you can just work with the elements. Um, you don't need to get involved with astrology. If you don't want to use astrology, you can just work um, with the, um, the the ordinary general planets, not your personal planets. I mean, because a lot of people don't remember when they were born, so they can't get a proper birth chart cast. So that if they've got that problem, they can then use the planets that are in the house at the time. Um, or they can work with the, uh, just work with the moon um, and, and synchronise with the moon uh, and use that. Or you can just not bother and just, just work with the, um, in the temple and the pentagram ritual without timing, you know, is it's like a big um adventure really to find out what works for everyone, 
Mm-hmm. You know, different pieces. It, it all depends how people, how, how much they want to get involved in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to keep things simple now I'm getting older. Um, right. Uh, but I still, I still, um, I still um, use, use the uh, astrology. Um, I've got a, um, I've got an app on the phone called Time Nomad. That's quite good. And that um, tells you when the transiting planets are affecting your birth chart and whatnot. Mm. So it's quite inter- it's quite useful if you're into astrology. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, let, let me just ask you this, Phil. What have you seen through your years and years of work and and how how has it changed your life dealing with uh you know the subconscious mind magic and rituals from the beginning stages when you were you know first getting in to like now you're you're just kind of in a in a position where you can you know manifest things or you know uh make things happen yeah <clears throat> Um, All right. What was one of the most uh, magical things that ever happened to you? Oh right. Um, <laughs> um, that you just knew. Oh man, that is how I I've done so much work, and now I program a reality that I forgot that this magical act actually happened. Yeah, I think the bet that that's definitely got to be when I when I met my wife. Because mm. um, I put a big order in for that sort of unnamed, unnamed partner. I wanted someone who I could meet and uh, like a soulmate. And I think that took about four or five years to materialise. But when it did, it came, uh, it just came out of the blue, you know. But I knew straight away it was, it was, it was working. And uh, yeah, with. Uh, we uh, met in in the January. We got engaged in April, and we got married in July. And uh, we, we've been married about thirty six years now. <laughs> so that's wow. probably the that's the um, the most outstanding magic, definitely. Um, yeah, that's powerful. It was, um, the, the, the only other one which uh, is when I uh, when I was getting um, I don't know if it was psychic attack or magical attack or something like that I, I, I was gonna do um, <clears throat> I was I was all set up to do a ritual and I, I was having a bath and that getting relaxed and that and um, even before the uh, the ritual started, I got a phone call uh, from the person and um, they were sort of like basically capitulating and I could tell that they was like giving in and that was before I even done the ritual. Um, and after they put the phone down, I went into the <clears throat> the room where I used to do the, where I was going to do the ritual and I got this huge sort of feedback, sort of like energy release because it wasn't used. Um, it, it, it's a strange experience, but you, you can get it through regular practice, you know. It's like, I know it's like an adrenaline rush. That's probably another outstanding. Uh, yeah. Outstanding. Cool. What I like to do, I don't like to, I don't like to interfere with things when they're running smoothly, if you know what I mean. Because mm-hmm. in my, my opinion i've done things and and they've um they've suddenly turned around uh in my experience you've got to, you get a you get a flow of positiveness and a flow of negativeness sort of like a yin and yang yeah and sometimes sometimes everything's going along and that's the time to leave it alone you know and uh just sort of harmonize with life and um other times i've tried to nudge it a bit and it's not worked out <laughs> right. um, 
that's really the most outstanding. The main ones, obviously, meeting me wife, that was uh, quite good. Um, yeah, 36 years, man. Yeah, that's that's yeah. it. That's powerful, don't you? But <laughs> I believe uh, sometimes, you know, things just happen like it was meant to be. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you, you, you as you say, it's meant to be. Sometimes if you interfere with um, the natural course of things, sometimes that's probably a good point because sometimes if you're working magic, you know, and sometimes you just don't get a result and you wonder why, and sometimes it's as if it's not meant to be or you're not supposed to be interfering with it. I don't know. I powers or something. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah Phil. Um, yeah, I just wanted to touch bases with you on here with the family real quick. Babe, did you want to ask a question before uh, we move yeah. around? Yeah, the- I did. First of all, thank you again, Phil, for coming on. Um, we appreciate you and we appreciate your work. And listen, when Dream got the books, he was so, I mean, when I tell you, he, it was like five o'clock in the morning here. He woke me up so excited that he was able to get the books directly from you. So it's powerful and it's magic. Literally, it's magic. And the funny thing is, is that our daughter has on a shirt right now that says, stay magical. And so my question to you is, after all of these years, what do you do now to stay magical? Is is the magical mindset kind of set in stone for you already? Or are you still doing uh, rituals, uh, ceremonial rituals, or is it just mental magic that you're tapped into at this point in your life? Yeah, it's mainly mental now, yeah, because um, um, cause we're living in a smaller house now. Uh, it's not so much that, it's... Um, over the years, I've sort of tried to, because um, because it's a busy life you live, and a lot of people don't have the time. I've um, I try to keep it simple. So what I do is I try and do I try and do quite a bit uh, before I go to sleep. Funnily enough, when I'm laying in bed, so I can usually work. Um, a ritual before I go to sleep mentally, uh, which I quite often do. Um, I use sigils quite a bit as well. Um, I like them because they're they're quick and easy to do. And I like to use um, a technique called glossalia. That's what they call um, talking in tongues. Mm. Um, spell that for us. Do you know how to spell that for you? Sorry? Can you spell that for us? Yeah, it's G L O Double S A L I A, I think. <laughs> and it's some it's some form of speaking in tongue or like uh it's... I think I know where you're going with it. Is it kind of like Glossalia, yeah. Okay. Um, They're well, speaking in an unknown language. It's not, I think that's, basically what it is, is you you try and disconnect your conscious mind from your subconscious. Um, so you, you're you talking, your, your conscious mind's not really focusing. It's, it's like magical misdirection. Mm-hmm. So your conscious mind is not focusing on it and you're, you're letting your subconscious just make words. And while you're doing that, you're in a type of a trance, but you're still, um, you still know what's going on, if you know what I mean. And you can visualize your sigil or have it drawn on your hand or um, anything like that. I think I've covered that in a book called Alakazam. It's only a small book. But that's basically how I do a lot of things now. It's just like, I like a little bit of drumming, uh, incense, and then do the ritual using glossalia. 
uh, using the inner temple idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. I had, uh, I actually did that before that glossary. I didn't know what it, what it was, but instead of me um, using a language that I was familiar with, I made, I did a ritual to where I made, uh, you know, how you can put in your sayings or your affirmations into Google and yeah. then, and make a different language. So I made a different language. <laughs> And I just kind of but butchered them up with the with the full moon, and I just was going ham like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, and I mean, then, I mean, in a way, it's sort of like a subliminal type right. of action, you know. Right, uh, right, because the intent is still there, and the power yes. is just in the feeling that's uh bringing upon the intent basically so you know yeah like well, the, yeah uh uh secrets of creative visualization where you say conviction affirmations is the key to this thing so it's like you know when mm -hmm. somebody says the affirmation real plain and oh uh i am happy i am yeah, yeah. i am prosperous no you gotta convict i am rich i am successful man i feel great today yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, also um, similar to glossalia is um, where you get to the the main part of the ritual, so the, the using the fountain, and then you repeat your affirmation while using your imagination to see the the power shooting up from the pool. Um, which is a type of glossalia in a way, because you're repeating the affirmation probably 12 times, but you're using it with symbolism, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And and that's quite a simple and easy way to, to do it as well, to get the message into the subconscious. Right. Um, right. I mean, one of the things I used to use years ago is I used to make up, a load of commands on a cassette tape and then listen to them as I went to sleep mm. every night for about six weeks until it started getting a reaction from that. Mm. Uh, there's lots of little offshoots you can do. Right. I mean, you can't beat a full ritual though. There's no doubt about it. You know, if you've been doing a ritual for just doing a ritual for no reason really just just keep yourself attuned you can do a ritual for say two months um and then um that will get you really ritual conditioned if you know what i mean and then you can then get start doing your intentions yeah. and then just do the the rituals every so often as an attunement just to keep things ticking over Mm hmm. Yeah, that's uh, good. It's, it all depends how much time people want to put in to it. Um, but yeah, going back to the question, um, mostly mental and um, that sort of thing, glossalia, just using incense, perhaps a bit of drumming. I quite often just use headphones with drumming on, um, MP3 player with sh shamanic drumming. Um, right. make sure you use the right incense uh, because if you use incense it acts it imprints things on your on your mind like sound so um, it's best to use incense just for the ritual purpose not not for perfuming the owls just if if you do that it's best to use um, just general incense yeah uh, um Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, uh, Phil, I got my brother on. He wanted to ask you a few questions, man, if you don't mind. My bro guy, Travis Majors. Trav, what's up? What up? What up, what up? Greetings, greetings. Thank you for having me on. Uh, you know it, Trav, you know it. Turn, turn, it, turn it up your mic, Trav, a little bit, just a little bit. All right. There's a little better. 
Yeah, that's good, I think. Okay, okay. Hmm. Mr. Philip Cooper, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah well, I've, uh, I've, I've seen you on YouTube. <laughs> oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you've what, been what a you really think big about, What do you think about Trav, Phil? Uh, yeah, he's done some good reviews on Amazon for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The um, Basic Magic review is quite good. And um, I've, I've listened to some of your things on YouTube. That, that's quite good as well. I like uh, it's, it's all good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, your, your, your work is amazing. Um, I really appreciate the, the information that you put out. Um, I'd have to say Basic Magic, of course, has really... Uh, changed my perspective on how to practically work in the occult you know um, what i really love about your work is that you take away a lot of the mystical hocus pocus fluffy yes, stuff yeah. and really bring it down to earth in a way that people can practically use every day mm. and um i really love how you put in basic magic and mm. the magician how if you don't understand what these words are saying in a spell or an incantation, don't worry about that. Don't use that. Use what yeah. makes sense. You know, belief. Yeah. Is life just force use your result. Yeah, just use your own language, whatever language yeah. it is. You know, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Really, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. I used to try and recite weird words years ago, and that, and you. I mean, I, I took out all the. Um, you know, uh, Yodi Valhi and uh, Adonai and Agla, uh, all them words out of the pentagram ritual. And I used to just use the the, the Om mantra mm. for charging each pentagram, mm. uh, which felt better for me, you know. Uh, plus it's supposed to be sort of like a way of connecting with the creative source. Uh, but that's just, you know, just what I used to like doing instead of using the, the um, Judaic words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about mimetic magic, Bill? Sorry? What do you think about mimetic magic? Mimetic. 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 Am I saying it right, Trav? Mimetic magic is kind of like... Uh, uh, using symbols uh new symbol like using a symbol as a code word basically with codes a code attached to the symbol that's meaning something different but you're seeing it oh yeah well people are seeing it and then you know there's they're subconscious yeah, I, picking up on the uh frequency yeah I, I used to do similar things like that years ago um uh, using symbols, uh, simple symbols, you know, like, for instance, a, a bag with a money sign on would be for money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A simple symbol like that and use that regular if you wanted to try and influence events for money. Uh, I don't know if that's what you mean. That's all. I think this actually kind of uh, leads into the question I really want to ask you. When you think about mimetic magic, it's really the use of sigils in a more expanded way. Um, it kind of yeah. makes me think of what Austin Osman Spare was doing with his mm. artwork. But the larger aspect of mimetic magic is that we think in memes, we think in shared ideas. So he who begins to control these shared ideas begins to control the flow of people's thoughts. So my question that yeah. I wanted to ask you is, Knowing about psychology and Kabbalah and how these things tie into play, how much would you say uh, neurolinguistic programming ties into what we call the occult and ritual? Mm. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, really, it's, it's, it's sort of like affirmations. Um, it's um, 
a way of influencing people by talking to them without hypnotizing them. I think that is that what you mean? Yes, mm. yes, it is. Mm. Yeah, I think that's quite powerful and uh, it's being used a lot by the governments at the moment. Um, right. If you notice that there's a lot more programming going on in movies and television. Uh, I mean, we don't watch any television now because it's nearly all propaganda anyway. Um, yeah. You might watch a, a movie or something if it's about a sort of story or something. But as soon as the old propaganda thing starts coming on, it, you start getting the feel for it affecting you and you think, you know, oh, no, this is programming yeah. me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I have tried using techniques like that when I've been out. Uh, if I've been out having a drink and that and I've purposely tried to influence someone by words and such like things to get them to do things without them knowing it and sometimes it can work, you know, quite well. Yeah. Um, I used to like trying in hypnotic convincers as well, you know, where you get people to put their hands together and make them believe there's like glue coming out their hands and then yeah. you say to them, you can't, part your hands and they if they're really programmable they wouldn't be able to part their hands you know that's quite funny yeah um, sometimes it works <laughs> it's a lot but, yeah, like it's all good. oh go ahead yeah i'll say it's all good stuff you know it's all it's all about experimenting and, and mm. finding your own what feels right for you magically isn't it if you know what i mean yeah it really makes me think of what uh, what they say in chaos magic. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. You know. Oh right, yeah. You know, what, what yeah, I used to. What we think it is. Yeah, I used to. Uh, I actually produced one of uh, two of Ray Sherman's books for him, uh, uh, Book of Results and Theatre and Magic, a few years ago. Um, I'm not been in contact with Ray Sherman for quite some time now, though, but. Um, he done some good work with uh, sigils. I quite like his book of results, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually tried some of them techniques. You just use an opening closing ritual and then you, you do like a dervish whirling until you start getting an altered state and then just hold the sigil in your imagination for half an hour or so. Uh, if you can find the space that is to do it. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, Phil, nice. Phil, um, uh, one more question, and I appreciate the time, Phil. Uh, you know, we're going to build again. Um, uh, well, give the, give the family the most important aspect of magic, if you will. Um, what it all boils down to. I think what it all boils down to is what happens to us when we die. And everyone wants to know that question. And, uh, you know, whether we go on or whether we come back, uh, reincarnate or... I mean, I used to have strong feelings of reincarnation when I was about five. Um, I used to get these feelings as if to say, oh, no, I'm back here again sort of thing yeah but as i got older it sort of as you get more mixed up in life you sort of um it sort of fades if you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then you get really wrapped up in life and then before you know it you're getting old again and passing on so i don't know i think it's definitely about exploring where you're going and what you're what you want to know uh, I think it's about really you, it's another way of looking at the questions of life and trying to make sense out of it mm -hmm. you know uh, I think that's the ultimate goal as of as, as the years gone on with me I've been more into the esoteric part of it and that's which it. is well finding out you know what life's all about because sometimes it really don't make no sense at all 
right. think that's where it leads to in the end. You start practical and then you end up going more spiritual. Right, yeah. right. That's nice. And uh, go ahead, Trav. Um, okay, so if I got time for one more question, um, this kind of links to what you were saying. Um, how important do you feel it is for practitioners to develop their abilities to astral travel mm -hmm. and astral project? <clears throat> Yeah, I think that should be a number one, definitely, because it's like an altered state. Um, but I think it's important not really to read books on astral projection because it puts ideas in your head of what you're going to see or expect to see. Um, so it's hard to say, really. Um, I think the easiest way is dream, the dream method. Um, and I used to have trouble dreaming. So I used to take um, um, cherry capsules that you can get off of Amazon and yeah. they increase the melatonin in your brain and it gives you a lot more vivid dreams. Mm. So then you can write, write them down and gradually learn to wake up in your dreams. Mm. I used to have... Um, I used to have uh, a lot of false awakenings where I was awake, awake, but I couldn't move, which is quite scary. Uh, what I used to do is then I used to try and move my little finger and gradually through sheer willpower, you'd pull yourself out of it or fall back into sleep, you know. But um, yeah, I think it's important to do, do astral projection or out of the body experience. The dream method's the easiest, I think. I used to um, do the little system from Ophiel. Yes. Um, I spent quite a lot of time doing that years ago. I had, I had all these symbols going down, down my stairs to my living room. And I used to fix them in my mind. Uh, my wife reckons she used to see this shape coming down the stairs sometimes. Nice. Uh, you know, but um, yeah, that one is one of my favorite ones. And shout out to Trav because he actually recommended that book. And when I read it, it took my astral projection to, you know, a, a deeper level and more, a, a better practice, if you will. So, yeah. yeah, that's good. I mean, the <clears throat> probably the easiest way is is to just lay quiet until and trick your body into thinking you're asleep. You know, you start getting these itches, facial tics and that, and you've got to not touch your face or anything and just pretend you're asleep. Try not to think really critically and then you'll start feeling this um, sort of vibrational thing take over. Mm -hmm. And if you can then keep it going, you can then separate from your body or it will just fizzle out quite often it fizzles out and it don't you know yeah i remember the first time i did it i i didn't know i was doing it but i was practicing so much and then when i actually felt it i went to the restroom and i'm thinking i'm in i'm thinking i'm up my physical body is up but it's still laying in the bed and I'm trying to turn on the light. I can't turn on the light. And I turn around and I see my body in the bed. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be scary, yeah. I, I remember one time I was astral projecting and I don't know what had happened. Um, my conscious mind, it was just chattering away. And it was just like chattering away. I couldn't think. And, and as soon as I tried to speak, it stopped for a second. And then it started again. <laughs> So what I had to do is I had to sort of start a word and stop it, which give me enough time to think, uh, and then it start up again. And that was a bit strange, but um, I don't know what happened there. So, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, that's a rejection. Yeah, I, I definitely recommend people put that in their um, curriculum without no, a doubt. Not. You know, some people find it hard to do and others seem to be able to do it quite easy. Um, but yeah, yeah that, that seems to be the easiest way of doing it, though. 
but the cherry idea is quite good. Uh, um, it does make your dreams a lot more um, vivid. Mm -hmm. I did actually write it in a book. I was I was trying to finish a book. I'm just starting a book called Acorum Acanarum. Uh, and it's just like a mixture of all different techniques and uh, and experiences I've had. And um, uh, it has got some spells and things in, which I consider that work. But I'll sort of work them with glossalia because i think they work better that way mm -hmm. um but i'm i'm still working on that one now <laughs> i'm just finishing off the magician the user guide now and i've um i've read it about 15 times and i'm fed up of reading it <laughs> but i keep finding typos in it uh, so but hopefully this will be the last read for all i can get it sorted out uh, can, can you tell us one more time, Phil, what the user guide would actually entail? Well, it is, it recaps on every chapter of the Magician book. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit in the start about initiation uh, and cause and effect. And then it basically tries to give additional advice on all the chapters right down to the 10th chapter, which was to do with seals and talismans. And then I'll put three more chapters in there about the tree of life, which mm -hmm. is basically getting rid of the, uh, all, the, all, all the attributions, the God names and the tarot attributions and, and, and just get it as you using it as a sort of a program to influence your subconscious mind and get the results that way basically yeah. trying to keep it as as simple as simple because a lot of these kabbalistic tree of life books are so complicated got so many attributions this is just basically just you and the tree of life if you know what i mean without all the rubbish and nonsense and then there's there's parts in there about I've put in about the uh, ast astrology because of even though there's supposed to be only 22 paths, there's a lot more than that. Um, and, and, and if you're using say your birth chart, for instance, and you've got say Mercury square to Venus, then that's a path, you know, uh, it's not on the tree of life, but it's still a path you can use in the same way the path working but it's more personal to you because it's in your birth chart if you know what i mean ah. so that that's for people who want to well I consider i mean when you're younger you you more you, you want more dynamic things and as you get older you start i think you start looking more spiritual things meditational things i mean when i was younger i wasn't really interested in the Kabbalah that much because it seemed a bit boring to me. I wanted to like uh, I was a bit naughty really. I used to like trying things out on people and and um, yeah. you know stuff yeah. like that. Getting up to a bit of mischief. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you sound like all of our paths on this line right now. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, Phil, we we appreciate you for coming on, man, and we uh, uh we really um are looking forward to your your new books, um, man, and just just a powerful powerful author, and your words, man, I recommend any. Our that's the number one recommendation. If we have to say a book, we just say, hey, the magician, read it. And, you know, go for what you know, and you'll start to understand a lot. Um, anybody you else know, got any? Going for two years hard. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else got any more questions before we get off of here? Chav, you got any more, D-Ray? Before we get off of here, you know, we'll have Phil on again soon. Don't worry about it. It's going to come again. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that new book. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's go down and go down. 
So, yeah, man, um, we appreciate you, Phil, and uh, I'll be in contact with you very soon. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it, you know, it's a job to know what to say, really. Uh, mm. So much I can say, talk about, but it take, you know, we could be here forever. <laughs> I know, okay, we, if you want to be here forever, Phil, tell us about the dive. What do you think about the dive, the backside of the tree, the clip off? Oh, what, the, the negative tree? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I've not really, um, oh, what do you mean? You're probably talking about the Goetia, are you? With the negative tree. Um, I've never really worked with a negative tree. I've just stayed positive, to be honest. Mm. I just, working Malkuth for practical magic and then obviously you can use the planets and then if you want to go that little bit further in different dimensions you can then use the the spheres on the tree of life which are a lot more embracing than than the planets you know mm -hmm. I've never really um I've never really bothered with uh, the negative side of the tree of life or uh, mm -hmm. I have been interested in the Goetia a bit but not not really bothered with that. Uh, what what do you feel is is negative? Feel like do you feel like uh, explain negative real quick for for the family? Um. Well, I mean, you've got the Goetia, which is supposed to be negative magic, which which really is just practical magic, and then you've got the um. The um, the angelic side of it. Uh, sorry, I'm having a brain freeze. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. The Shemham Mefarash. Yeah, um, that's it. Yeah, um, which is the esoteric side of it. So, I mean, I suppose people like conjuring up the Goetia because it it's got a dark glamour to it. Um, yeah. And I suppose, and if you're not pretty sound in mind, you could be playing with fire, really, because um, it all depends if you, I don't know, got mental problems, which might might not be a good idea to use them. I've did I've done some work with the Sargo, uh, but um, I. I had sort of like shortly afterwards I had like a um an accident and I wasn't really sure whether that was me being um I don't know oversensitive or not but I got the seal of the sargo and put it into a a um I've got like a it's like a brass jug thing and uh i sealed it up in there and left it there and i didn't bother anymore <laughs> so i don't know whether that had anything to do with it whether i was just reading too much into it or not but i decided to lock him away but we've all got our own set of goishas in our mind anyway uh, because um you know you might get someone say in australia who's who's banished the saga for good but at the same time in another part of the world someone will be evoking him so you know it's obviously got to be more than one <laughs> you know what I mean uh, oh. negative magic yeah probably destructive magic which is perhaps where someone would try and put a curse on someone mm. But I, I like to think of it as negative, positive magic. Instead of putting a curse on someone, you could make them a better person. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like a nice curse, but they'd be a better person instead of because that way you're not treading on thin ice. And if you know what I mean, um, you're more likely to get a reaction from cause and effect by being negative. But there's no reason why you can't make a nasty person a better person. So it's like a good curse. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
That's more what it is anyway. Yeah, oh, that's very interesting, Phil. Very, very interesting. Uh, Chad, have you got anything to follow up on that? Yeah. Um, the way I like to look at curses is, is um, because you know you've got to have that that balance, you know, and, and yeah. you also have to ha have the uh, removal of vested interest in the outcome, right? You don't you don't want to be too invested in the outcome. So what yeah. I do is put something on the person but there's always a, a back door to get out of it, you know, and usually yeah, that back yes. door is the person does something to correct ego issues in themselves. If they, if they take the higher road, if they decide to change for the better, then in a way I, I use that as a way to uh, relieve the curse from them. So usually yeah. if the person is going to continue on the path that pissed me off in the first place, they'll continue <laughs> to get the punishment. But usually yeah. if they find oh, yeah. something in themselves to take the higher road, then yeah, I like that option to do that in there. Yeah. That yeah. way, either way, I win. I think we've all done something like that, yeah. I mean, I have. <laughs> mm. It's just self-defense on a psychic level. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. Cool. Yeah, that's It's just good. that you, you know, you've took the time to learn them where they're not took the time, so you've got the upper hand, which is good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice, nice. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. So yeah, Phil, we appreciate you, man. We we'll, we appreciate you, Phil. Appreciate the time, man. Appreciate the writing, and Chaos Family, be on the lookout because I'm gonna have something from Phil very soon, very soon, family. So be on the lookout. Until next time, peace out. Peace.